Good morning and welcome to Benzinga 2024. We are at Hollywood, Cal no wait, we're in Hollywood, Florida. <laughs> My brain is in California. Um, welcome, I am here with CEO and founder of Virtosa, Ben Larson. How are you, Ben? I'm doing well, thanks for having me. We're very happy to have you today. And so today is day one of the conference. We've got a lot of great speakers on the panel today. And this morning we kicked it off with a really interesting topic, which is hemp versus cannabis in space. That's right, yeah, hot topic. Hot topic for sure. I think it's a question that a lot of people, even within the industry, do have a lot of questions about. So if you will allow me to start with a softball question. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit, can, what is the difference between hemp and cannabis? It's the same plant, right? It is the same plant. I think that's the one thing that we can agree on. Um, and often the conversation that I'm trying to have because there's a lot of division in the space and not just between cannabis and hemp, but within cannabis and right, hemp, right. individually. Um, I was at NOCO last week while I was at Big Hemp Conference. And at NOCO, well, you have everywhere from the material side of hemp all the way to the intoxicating compounds. You know, So materials mainly like industrial hemp? Industrial hemp. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so just imagine how those uh, operators feel about having to have these conversations and being hooked into these conversations mm -hmm. around manufactured cannabinoids and that kind of thing. It's like a whole other world for them. Yeah, it's it's wild. So I feel like, you know, and I've only been in the cannabis space for three years. I know you've been around for much longer than that. But even in the past three years, I have seen a visible shift in people's attitudes about them. I've seen a lot more conversations about them in general and its integration with the cannabis space. What do you think causes, you know, kind of this newer resurgence of interest in the cannabis space? Yeah, well, I mean, the 2018 Farm Bill uh, was kind of what like really kicked it off. Um, and it wasn't immediate, but what happened is people started pushing the bounds of what the interpretation of those laws mm -hmm. actually meant. A lot of gray um, space. A lot of gray space. <laughs> and, and, you know, Delta 8 products were released, Delta 9 products were then released. Um, but what really catalyzed a lot of those recent conversations with Minnesota legalized low doses of hemp mm -hmm. in the mainstream marketplace. Um, and what that really gave the opportunity was to have cannabis or THC called right. Um, <laughs> right next to its alcohol counterparts uh -huh. in restaurants, in liquor stores, in grocery stores. And we just saw this explosion of interest. And not only was there interest in Minnesota, but it started kind of proliferating from there. So even in California, that has a very entrenched cannabis regulated cannabis system, we are now having this conversation about how to and how far to incorporate that into the local supply chain. Well, who would have thought that Minnesota would have been the one to kind of push the envelope? It wasn't on, <laughs> it wasn't on my bed. No. But that does make a little bit more sense, kind of giving, taking it back to that kind of legislative side of that kind of being the catalyst for all these conversations. Yes. Now, shifting it a little bit more back to you, CEO and founder of Virtosa, can you tell us a little bit more about story behind the company. I think you guys are behind some of the biggest names in the infused space. So I'd love to learn kind of how that came to be. Yeah, uh, how it came to be. Uh, well, my, my, my co-founder, Dr. Harold Hahn, uh, hey, is, you know, <laughs> uh, is a emulsion chemist by trade. Mm -hmm. We had met when I was running a startup in uh, in California for the cannabis industry. It's called Gateway. And we just knew that beverage was the future. And, and when I met Harold, said, hey, there's a, there's a lack of solid technology in the space, and we need to build a technology, build a company that really could act as a foundation. We don't want to own brands ourselves. Uh, we just want to support this category that we do need to exist. So when we first started back in 2018, there weren't refrigerators and dispensaries. There sure as heck wasn't Delta 9 right. uh, beverages and total wine. Um, but we knew that someday it would be. If you build it, they will come yeah, yeah, that doesn't always work out. But in, in this case, in this case, it did. It did. It just, you know, took about six years. Right. Uh, right. So, so the company's about six years old at this point. Um, and yeah, we do have infused beverages going into total nine, being sold on DoorDash, and it's just actually like when your dreams do come true, it's it's kind of a, a weird place. It's not exactly how we had planned it. It's never how we planned it. It's never, especially in cannabis, right? It's never the way you Yeah. Planned. And so now we're just, uh, yes, we continue to support 
about 100 grand in space across all of North America. Um, you know, we operated in about 20 legal states uh, last year, serving the hemp market um, and kind of expanding from there. And yeah, there's a lot of conversations happening on, on the legislative side as well, just to kind of continue to frame this opportunity. And you make a really great point because even within the kind of the, the renaissance of the, the hemp conversation that's going on now, even more so when you talk about infused beverages, there is so much more um, variety out there. There are a lot of like really cool brands coming out. Yeah. Probably most of them get infused by you guys, but you know, the the brand itself and the the variety of brands that we have to choose from is really exciting. So yeah. that being said, what about the future, right? Let's think about new markets because, you know, I live in Florida, right? So right now, we're only now starting to see those Delta 9 and, you know, hemp-based THC yeah. brands coming to the space. What are some other markets that you're excited to get into? I mean, basically everyone. Uh, you know, I was talking to some of the leadership at, at some of these major retailers getting into the game. And, you know, they want to be in as many as 25 states by the end of the year. By the end of the year. By the end of the year. Jeez. So they're looking at this as a huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, alcohol sales have been something. Right. And and uh, early signs are that, that cannabis makes a, a great replacement, especially these, these low dose. Yeah, little guys. Um, and I was just on Reddit actually last night looking at just a bunch of like commentary yeah. from, from the general public and people are replacing alcohol with it and feeling better. You know, not waking up with hangovers, losing weight because a lot of them are low calorie. Lower calorie. Um, don't hang over, don't headache. Yeah, and so it's like you have product market fit, and we're in this weird place in time where, you know, depending on your interpretation of laws, there's there's this open pathway uh, to the consumer for the first time ever for THC products. Um, so whether you're a hemp or cannabis, it's like I think it's a it, there's a huge gravity to the opportunity that's in front of us right now, and um, yeah, it's a big conversation. I know we can't fit it all into <laughs> this fireside chat, but at least it's, it's a conversation starter, and I think it's a way to get people starting to think about what's coming next on yeah. that front. And I will say one more thing, and I'm going to let you hopefully agree with me. As this is all rolling out, the missing piece, or maybe the piece that we need to start thinking about next, is education. Yes. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. you're going to have these things on, you know, merchandise next to alcohol yeah. or in dispensaries. Where is that going to come from? Like, who is going to educate the consumers? Great question. Uh, shout out to the Cannabis Beverage Association and the Hemp Beverage Alliance. Uh, but the CBA in particular, uh, Diana Emerlane's president and the whole team, uh, is working on educational materials to hand to retailers, oh. distributors, um, so that they can put it from the consumer. Because some of the early conversations, you know, when all those pictures started surfacing of total wine, and right, and right. Um, you know, we, we called some of the, the store managers and the, the tellers. Of, do they know anything? No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of them do. Some right, of them right. enjoy the product. But in large part, no. It's like, some of them are like, what's I feel like? And it's like, oh, oh, wow. Where do you even start? <laughs> yeah. So okay. really important conversations to be had. Um, you know, uh, but in essence, the beverage is a nice format because you can actually just give it a try mm -hmm. and see how it affects it. It's not going to have these adverse effects right. that, like mistakenly consuming a hundred dollars. Yeah, it's you can't. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's a great opportunity for people seeing cannabis in a familiar form factor, not being afraid of it, mm -hmm. and giving it a try for the first time and determining, it's like, is this for me or is it not? Do I want more? You know? It feels very accessible and safe. It you is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm glad to hear that the, you know, the advocacy behind education is a partnership between the brands. And an association, so everyone has like a unified front there. Yeah. Um, and then that will trickle down to the folks on retail, which is good news for all. Yeah, of them. like like I said, this is an opportunity not just for the beverage uh, community, but for cannabis and hemp at large uh, to really have exposure to mainstream consumers. So we really don't want to mess it up. Uh, we want to make sure we're educating everyone we can, and that we're promoting you know responsible business. So you know that goes from the brands to the distributors. And, yeah, the it's people really, behind the cashiers. Yeah, it's really a group effort. Right. Yes. Well, I will say that I think in cannabis, that's something that we are all in the same for, you know, every time we step out of our door, we are representing this industry. And even if we educate someone a little bit every day, that's part of what we do. Absolutely. Um, it has been lovely speaking to you, Ben. Yeah. I thank you for spending time with us today at C-Lab, at Benzinga.
Best of luck to you and the team. I cannot wait to see more garbage in our show in Florida. And thank you so much. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Get yes. ready. Bye. Thanks, everyone.